Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Easter. If you are gathered with us online, I invite you to let us know that you're here. Type Amen. Thanks be to God. Peace be with you. All the things that you would normally say in our responsive liturgy into the chat and comments so that you can fully participate and worship together this morning. During the peace, I will invite you to share the peace with each other. Uh, if you're on Zoom, you can do that um, just through your video or you can do that on chat and comments on Facebook Live and on Zoom. Um, during the prayers, I would invite you to share your prayer concerns uh, out loud from wherever you are worshiping or silently in your hearts or in the chat and comments to be shared in community. So I am grateful that you all are here with us today. Uh, we do have one change in the worship bulletin, our closing hymn will be hymn 619, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the music of the prelude. I am grateful to Steve White for providing our music today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. And at the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as sons and daughters, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of love and of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit 
and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn 384, That Easter Day with Joy Was Bright. Hold on. Something just happened. Sorry, everybody, I'm having a technical difficulty. Oh, something didn't happen. Fortunately, it's a technical difficulty I think I can solve. If you are on Facebook Live, if you could let me know in the chat and comments if you were able to hear that music as it played. I'm not sure um, I can do both play from that device and uh, stream to Facebook Live. So if you were frozen or couldn't see, thanks Judy, that's helpful to know. I'm sorry about that y'all. Um, Something happened with my devices and my music is not synced for our worship. Um, so, I'm sorry about that. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Before I read the psalm, if you'll give me one second, I'm going to see if I have another option when it comes to our music. I think I do. I do. Hooray. Okay. So we will have music um, later in the service. Our psalm is Psalm 116. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ear to me whenever I called. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you save my life. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? 
I will lift the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious in your sight, O Lord, is the death of your servants. O Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on that same day when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. When they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since all these things took place. Moreover, some of our, the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart. To believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered, and they were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Praise Christ. Praise to you, O Christ.
grace and peace to you. Some time ago, I discovered a podcast published by Our State Magazine called Away Message. A Greensboro reporter travels all over the state sharing the stories of places that are off the beaten path. And in the finale from the first season recorded three years ago, he walked house out in Guilford County to his office in downtown Greensboro and as he walked he recorded the people he met and the conversations he had and how different his 14 mile commute sounds sounded and looked compared to the short drive he usually took to get to his office. As I was imagining the two disciples walking to Emmaus, some seven miles from Jerusalem, I remembered that reporter and his story. And I also realized that his story and the story of the disciples and our story today are all one. The Ingalls in Kings Mountain Klein's Nursery up Falston Road or Crest High School are all just a little less than seven miles from the church sanctuary. It isn't like walking this journey of discipleship is taking us to far away places. It isn't like we're beginning a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. We are in familiar territory. And yet we are on the road, on the way with Jesus. And especially right now, our lives look and feel and sound different than they have in the past. It's easy to recognize the holy when we are on mountaintops or in sacred spaces like our sanctuary or we are celebrating the passion of the Christ during Holy Week. But as the disciples in Luke's gospel discover, when we are famili in familiar or unremarkable surroundings, it can be a whole lot more difficult. Jesus invites the travelers into conversation. His question to them is literally, what words have you been tossing back and forth? Isn't that so much of what our conversation feels like these days? Words tossed back and forth from the news to us, from us to a friend, and then back to the news. The disciples are trying to get at the heart of the matter to make sense of the cross, and sadly, they are unable to sort it out. I confess that I don't like the next bit of our gospel story. It sounds to me like Jesus is scolding the disciples and then lecturing them, showing them where they had missed the signs in scripture that point to him being the Messiah and how they had forgotten his own words foretelling his death and his resurrection. I'll be honest, I like the Jesus who eats with his friends and heals the sick more than this one. But then I remember John's gospel, where the gospel writer tells us, in the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Jesus tells 
the truth. In Luther's words, he calls a thing what it is. When my eyes are clouded and I cannot see the way, I am grateful Jesus is there to set me straight. And the disciples don't seem bothered by this talking to. In fact, when it looks like Jesus is going to leave them and continue on, they urge him to stay with him, with them. Last summer, when I went on my silent retreat, I discovered an icon, a religious image of Mary that called her the untire of knots. And I wonder if that isn't how the disciples felt listening to Jesus. Instead of feeling scolded or lectured, perhaps listening to him helped unknot or untie what the psalmist calls the cords of death and the anguish of the grave. And then when Jesus was at the table with them and took the bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them, their eyes were opened. And they remembered how their hearts had burned within them as he had spoken about all these things. With perfect hindsight, they recognized they had been in the presence of the Holy. We're not participating in the sacrament of Holy Communion or the table while we are apart. But later in worship, I will invite you into spiritual communion, a practice of prayer shared by our full communion partners in the Episcopal Church. And in the absence of physical wine and bread, broken, blessed, and given, where else may our eyes be open to see the holy in our midst? Certainly with the psalmist, we can begin with words of thanksgiving and praise. We first call on the name of the Lord because we know God's promises to us. And then we call on the name of the Lord again as we experience the freedom of being rescued from sin and death and loved by God. The freedom to have our eyes opened to all that is holy. Where else may we not merely glimpse Jesus, but listen to God's word and pay attention to where God is being revealed. Perhaps it's in a conversation with a neighbor that would have been missed if you both got into your cars and left the house each day. Or it's in sharing a Zoom Bible study with a friend from across the state. Or it's in slowing down to look around you and notice when your heart is burning. Where have you experienced joy this week? The questions I leave for you on this third Sunday of Easter are when have you experienced the peace of knowing God is with you? And what is a gift that you have received during this time of worshiping from home? Let us pray. Redeeming God, we give thanks for your only Son, made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Close to your heart, he brings grace and truth to us all. Open our eyes and hearts to your love and forgiveness and make us aware of your holy presence with us. May your grace sustain us as we follow Jesus. We pray in your holy name. Amen. In just a moment, our sermon hymn will be this joyful Easter tide.
I'm gonna try it this way. This may mess with the people who are on Zoom, but the people on Facebook Live will get to hear this. Hopefully everybody will. Hymn of the day, 26 April 2020, 391. This Easter time. God has gathered his people into one church through Christ. Together with sisters and brothers throughout the world, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church the world and all who are in need. I invite you to add your prayer concerns out loud from wherever you are worshiping in the chat and comments or silently in your hearts. For those whose hearts are fervent with love for your gospel, 
that they are empowered to tell the story of your love in their lives and to show hospitality in response to this love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the diverse natural world, for jungles, for prairies, for forests, for valleys, mountains, and for all the wild and endangered animals who call these spaces home, that they are nurtured and protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For broken systems we have inherited and that we continue to perpetuate, forgive us. Restrain the nations from fighting over limited resources. Redeem us from the cycles of scarcity and violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who call upon your healing name, give rest. Stay with us and walk with all those who are hungry, friendless, despairing and desiring healing in body and spirit. We pray especially for those we name aloud now or silently in our hearts. Mary Allen, Mary. Kathy Backoff, Dan Birch, Dan, Carolyn Blitz, Kathy Bradley, Chris Carmen, Betty Connor, Edna Cooper, Joan Craig, the Davenport family, Gloria Dellinger, Pat Farley, Ann Fitzsimmons, Evan Green, Mike Green, Marky and Carl Greenwald, the Holiday family, Michael Hunsinger, Mac Jenkins, Patty Jenkins, Steve Jolly, Mark Kent, Becky and George Kraft, Jim Lilly, Kevin Lilly, Heather Lyerly, Kathy Lyerly, Eva McCombs, Jameson McGill, Bernice McDaniels, Janice McGovern, Charlotte Morin, Teresa Olson, Bob Patzer, Margaret Peruzzi, Tommy Price, Beth Rhine, Harold Rhine, Lori Rosamond, Pastor Eric Sellers, Jan Tucker, Pam Unger, the Von Baron family, Renee Walton, Molly and Daryl Waterstrat, Alfie Welch, Eric West, Christopher Williver, John Paul Wolf, Mary Ann Woolley, Denise and Savannah Yount, Dean Davis, Lynn Washburn, Dot Paul, Bob Bryant, Jane Sneed, William Coyne, Jim Wilson, Steve Eckert, Sandy Harmon, Bobby Johnson, Bobby Jones, Marjorie Olson, Gerald Washburn, Emma Auk, Brooke Buchanan, Parker Hart, 
Elizabeth Hoffman, Samantha Hoffman, Jacob Stone, Jenna Washburn, Emma and Patrick Budzinski, Jordan and Suzanne McKillop. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the faith-forming ministries of this church, guide and inspire learners of every age and ability. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Create in our hearts a yearning to rest in your promise of eternal and resurrected life. Give us thankful hearts for those who have died, even as we look forward to the hope of new life with you. We pray especially for Patricia DeBose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you all. And also with you. Also with you. Let everybody share the peace for a minute. Peace to everyone. Peace to everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace with all. At this time, I invite you to make your gifts and offerings, your tithes to the ministry and mission of Ascension Lutheran Church, just as you would if we were gathered in person. You can use the website to make a donation. You can use the Give Plus app. You can text the amount that you want to donate to 844-906. 2283. And of course, you can mail your regular offering into the P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 266 in Shelby 28151. We're grateful for your continued stewardship of your resources and the gifts that God has first given you to be shared with our offertory 84. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. St. Thomas Aquinas defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the most holy sacrament and lovingly embrace him as if we had actually received him. 
This invitation to communion is not through physical bread and wine we can touch, but an invitation to spiritual communion with the God who always comes to meet us wherever we are. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to you and eat with you and you with me. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace, I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Come Lord Jesus and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness and in the power in the power of your gracious might rule every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Charlie's just making sure those hostile powers stay at bay. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 619, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. If you'll stick around after the dismissal, we'll have a, an encore performance of the prelude that Steve had recorded for today. <laughs> Sorry for the technical and musical glitches. I Know That My Redeemer Lives. Closing hymn. Number 619, I know that my Redeemer lives. <laughs> Go in peace, share the good news.
Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.